Welcome into Running It Straight, our new time of 2 o'clock on a Wednesday, 31st of May. And it is a big show between now and 3 o'clock. Coming up shortly, around about 10 minutes' time, uh, Sir Graham Lowe, man who coached Queensland uh, back in the day and uh, led them actually to a uh, series victory over New South Wales. He's going to join us on the line as well as the voice of rugby league and the voice of origin over the years, Ray Warren. He's uh, been out of action for about 18 months, Kempi, but uh, you will hear his voice uh, this afternoon on the SCNZ Airwaves. So looking forward to it. A couple of legends. A couple of legends ahead of uh, what is a massive night on the rugby league calendar. That is State of Origin 1 this evening. And our big preview this afternoon for State of Origin is big thanks to Super Liquor. We say cheers to that and cheers to the good times. Uh, text any time on double eight double three. You can comment on the YouTube live, uh, live as well. We will pick that one up. And we also have... Uh, two double passes to give away for the Warriors game this weekend against the Dolphins at Mount Smart. That is Saturday, 5 p.m. kickoff. So we've got two double passes to give away. Uh, what we might do is just get you to text through double eight double three your favourite Origin memory, Kempi. Great. I've got I've got a thousand of Go them on since nineteen eighty. Right, right, right off the top. Well, right, right off the top is when Chris Close bashed them all in that game right, okay. right back in the uh, in the early years. I think it was eighty three. That game. Might have been. I'm, I might have my year wrong, but I remember watching it. I was just saying uh, to Rabs, watching on VHS, you know, replay because you didn't get it live back in those days. We never had a sky box, and we couldn't rewind it and all that sort of stuff. You had to go down to the the um, the local store. You either had to have a video player and record it, or mm. uh, you had to go and go and get it at video easy. So um, those were the those early memories of Wally Lewis and those passes and the kicking game. You remember we used to play the leather ball back then too. It wasn't a pigskin like it is today. Um, it was really. Yeah, like you know the, the the white lines on the end of the football. Yeah, kick them when they kicking them. Yeah, Lang Park with the with the hills, mm-hmm. the crowds. Um, you know, it's fifty cents. So many, fifty cents for so a Mars many bar. And... <laughs> well, mate, it probably was fifty cents for a ticket back then. <laughs> um, you can't fa- buy one my, these days. My, my favorite memory, and it's it'll always live long. Uh, I remember staying up late. It was a school night for me, Kempi, and I'll show, be showing my young age there. Two thousand and nine, game three. Uh, Steve Price and Brent. I think it was Brent White. Brent White from um, Melbourne. And they it's went up to toe, toe. And the qu- the big question was: Was he knocked out before Trent Waterhouse came in with the with the swinging arm? He, and well, took he'll him down. tell you he was. Yeah, you know. He, <laughs> well, he probably won't remember either way. Well, I, I knew Pricey really well. You know, he's. Um, we actually talked about. It. He says, "I don't know what I was doing, mate. I can't fight." Yeah. But he, uh, no, he, he, he shaped was, up. He, he was, shaped he up was doing he... the slaps. But the reason why I love that game is because uh, obviously the series was done and dusted. Queensland had wrapped it up again. I think it was their fourth in a row at that point. Um, it's game three. There's only about two minutes left. And after the 10 minute stoppage there for Steve Price to get taken off the field, uh, Queensland get the penalty. They kick it out. Funnily enough, Trent Waterhouse got sent off, mm. and he was the first person since Gordon Tallis in 2001 in that game in 2009. So it'd been eight years. So Queensland kick it out down to the halfway line, throw the ball back into Cam Smith. He just puts up a bomb so they can absolutely smash. I think it was, was it G- uh, G- uh, Gidley at the back? Gidley. Uh, they absolutely smashed him and then scrum 2.0. You had everyone <laughs> running in. You had Thigh Day. You had Hodges. <laughs> I think Hodges was trying to call out uh, Brent White or one of them. Um, and then I still remember the, the images vividly of Hodges sort of saying, come over here, mate. Come have a scrap. And when they pan to the New South Wales guy, he's got blood streaming down his face and he just goes, and licks it all off, and I just thought, that's Origin. Isn't that Origin? Give it's changed over the oh, years. It has, but. it has. Back in, you know, it's the Arthur Beetson days, and, you know, it, it's a lot PC these days. I think the uh, the last real scrap in Origin was Gallon. Yeah, and he only did it, you know, out of almost well, tradition, you know. Yeah. It was almost a fake can, fight. Can, can throw him. Can <laughs> throw of course him he can, yeah. Nate Miles in his box head, you know what I mean? Like, it was a good target. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, the Gordon Tallis days, there's, there's just so many good moments and good players that go in there that, you you know, when you narrate in a, like a Netflix movie about Origin, yeah. mate, it's a, it's a bestseller. Yeah. It really is. Now, uh, Kempi, the, the, the thing we've got to remember is that we also have some NRL action this weekend, including the Warriors against the Dolphins on Saturday night. Uh, as we always do to open the show, we generally wrap uh, the, the game of the weekend just gone. For that, it was the Warriors against the Broncos down in Napier. Uh, if you've seen the video on circulating on social media, you will know how invested both Kempi and I were uh, at the end of that game. Kempi, you've had a couple of days just to, I guess, sit back and take the emotion out of it. How have you How have you sort of assessed it looking well, on? You had mo- you had moments, and you always have moments in games, and we just didn't finish them off and take you know take those moments like we, we got across enough times even with a 70 percent completion rate you've got to remember that we're sitting number one in completions in the competition and we end up with a 29 out of 41 set completion rate which is 70 percent um, and you can't win games in the competition like that and for a number of reasons when you come up against Brisbane who've been sitting top of the table fourth before this game um, 
you can't give them that opportunity with a player like uh, Reynolds, who's running the cutter at halfback. He just grew and grew and grew throughout that game, Sammy, down mm. in Hawke's Bay. And by the end of it, he was getting cramped because they were allowing him to run. They weren't taking um, and, uh, pressure off him when, they, when he was running with that football. They weren't going and get him. And then his kicking game was second to none. He makes a couple of breaks. He finds Ezra Mann, puts the game beyond our control. All but Adam Pompey not touching that winger. Sean Johnson kicks kicks the uh, the goal from the sideline to win it. So mm. it would have been a perfect weekend. Uh, I think they'll look back on it and go, yeah, it was a, a, a game that we, we didn't really take our moments. And when they gave that try away just before half time, uh, you know, the one after half time, it, it became a, a catch up game of catch up. And yeah. unfortunately, it's uh, it's one of those games that got away. And we know that through this little period, these three games before the bye, so we've got the Dolphins this week Canberra, we could have easily had those three games. Yeah. And I hope this doesn't come back to bite us. I totally agree with you. And, and like you said, uh, would have capped off an amazing weekend for us down there in Napier. Uh, like I said, today's show is going to have a very origin flavour, but we, uh, we will focus on the Warriors like we always do. So why don't we now just for a couple of minutes before we get to Graham Lowe, just talk about this weekend, Kempi, 5 o'clock at Mount Smart against the Dolphins. The Dolphins losing, uh, of course, uh, Hamiso Tabwaifido and uh, Tommy Gilbert uh, to Origin. The Warriors, of course, don't lose anyone, but we do welcome back Wade Egan, uh, Mitch Barnett and Dylan Walker. So the team really starting to look like a team that uh, Andrew Webster probably had penciled on paper at the start of the season. Can be minus maybe one or two names. So not only talk to me about not only how important those guys coming back into the side is, but also how important it, it is that they get two points over the Dolphins on, on well, Saturday. Well, it is. It's, uh, it's important that they bounce back. You know, the, what no one has spoken about is their record away from home when they're taking games on the road in New Zealand is pretty poor. You know, it's not as if they go away on a on an away game, um, uh, well, which is away from Mount Smart in New Zealand and win it. It's it's heavily weighted against them, and it, and again in Hawke's Bay that happened. But when they're at Mount Smart, it's a different story. And coming up against a Dolphin side again, that one on the weekend coming in, they're quite buoyant. I just don't think he can take this game too easy. Getting those uh, three players back now, they're class players. Getting Walks back on the bench, I think that was a massive. Um, part of the game that we missed when he he wasn't there on the weekend against Brisbane, having mm. him back against the Dolphins, then I can see them starting to build a little bit, a little bit of um, momentum, and of course using them changes in the middle as he needs them, um, Andrew Webster. So it's a it's a I, look. I think this is a massive opportunity. I actually have got them winning the game on the weekend and winning it well. I think if they you know come off the back of it, I said this last week. The Warriors to me are, are just a snip away from putting on a really good performance and winning well. Absolutely. And I feel like having these blokes come back, like training, would have, they would have been bouncing. You know, they would have been disappointed they went to Hawke's Bay. They let Tohu down. You know, they didn't get the win for Hawke's Bay. That was all the talk about it. And yet they come back home. There's going to be 20,000 plus again at home. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm expecting them to go out there and make it really tough on the Dolphins. Yeah, I agree. Um, and you could be one of those people there this weekend. Just text us through on double eight double three your favourite origin memory or memories, uh, and you go into the draw to win a two uh, a double pass for the game this weekend against the Dolphins. Just quickly before the break, Kenby, what's the what's the target Dolphins wise this weekend? Uh, we mentioned him, so uh, Tabai Fido out, Tommy Gilbert out, but where do you think they suffer? Maybe that the Warriors can uh, can exploit. Well, look, I think I think if you have a look at their um, halves and their fullback, you know, you've got Cody Nikarima playing fullback. I think you've got to get a decent kicking game in there. So Sean's kicking game, it wasn't as good as Reynolds on the weekend. Um, I think Cody needs to be put under a lot of pressure. And, not, you know, it'd be nice to think that when Sean puts a kick, kicks in, that when Cody gets that football, he's actually got guys bearing down on him and making it tough for him. Mm. I think Anthony Milford and... Uh, uh, Isaiah Kato and the, the young halves, I think that's a, that's a, a target space for our edge runners. You know, if you have a look at Jackson Ford, the way that he, he runs lines, Marutu no, uh, no Kore, the way that he runs lines, Sean Johnson's got to be putting the, those blokes a one-on-one against those two. So the, the Fords, I think, with the, with this experience that they've got with Jesse Bromwich, Kenny Bromwich, they can, they can cancel themselves out there. But when we go to the edges, I think that's where we can make some damage. OK, so uh, this Saturday, 5pm kickoff from Mount Smart. We will be on here from 4.40 live coverage, myself and Kempe at the ground. And you can be there as well. Just text through your favourite origin memories to double eight double three. You can drop them on. A YouTube link as well. We'll see that there, and uh, you'll go into the draw to win that double pass. Uh, we are doing our origin preview here on Running It Straight this afternoon. That is a big thanks to Super Liquor. We say cheers to the good times with Super Liquor. And coming up after the break, Sir Graham Lowe, a man who coached Queensland to a series win over New South Wales, uh, a man who many Kiwis hold in uh, high reverence given what he did over in Australia. We're
we're going to take a break and chat with Sir Graham Lowe after that. Yeah, 18 minutes past two here on Running It Straight. It is our big origin preview as we build towards game one this evening between the Maroons and the Blues from Adelaide, uh, which uh, that's an interesting one. We'll talk uh, to Kempi about that a bit later on. But joining us now on the line is uh, a Kiwi man who his uh, name has become synonymous with origin here in New Zealand. Of course, uh, he did coach the Kiwis uh, as well as Manly, but uh, he will be known uh, in state of origin circles for coaching Queensland to a 2 1 win over New South Wales in 1991 it is of course Sir Graham Lowe and he joins us on the line now. G'day Lowe. G'day, how you doing? Thank you for having me on. Mate, great to have you on. Now uh, I know when you were coaching the Kiwis um, in the 80s you, uh, you you succumbed to a very powerful Australian team led by none other than Wally Lewis. You must have been pretty relieved when you get the Queensland job and all of a sudden you're coaching Wally and not coaching against him. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the game's had a lot of great players over the years and, and since the inception of, of, of Origin football back in 1980, there's certainly been some, some great ones, but none better than Wally. None, Wally is, is unique and, um, you know, to have the privilege and honour and thrill of actually being his coach uh, in the, you know, for a couple of years in, in Origin was just fantastic and, and um, you know, he's just such a great bloke as well and it's a, it's a thrill when I think back on it. Did you have to coach him much at all, Lowy? I mean, we're talking about Wally Lewis here. Did he need much, or was it just a matter of, you know, setting him up, putting the ball in his hands and letting him do his thing? I think at that level, it's like test level in, in any sport. You know, you don't really coach them. It's man management as much as anything and, and making sure you've got it. You come up with a plan, a plan that's easily understood by everyone involved and, and you're confident it's going to work and that you have a, you know, you, you have a strategy that's going to really put forward your best players um, and try and find the weaknesses that may may be there in the, in the opposite team. And, and they're, they're actually trying to do the same to you. Mm. Hey, Lowe, it's Kimby, mate. Good to talk to you. Hey, um, a lot of people don't probably understand, but you actually coached in Queensland before you made your, your trip into the uh, the ARL and with Manly and that, and then on to Queensland and, and New Zealand and, and that history-making run that you had. But what is it so – what is it – so special about Queensland, you know, like from a Kiwi's perspective and sitting inside there, when they, they pull on that maroon jersey, what was it about it that from your perspective was so special? Well, it can't be good to talk to you, mate. I think there's a number of things. I, I did have the, the the real pleasure and privilege of, of coaching Norths in Brisbane um, from 1979 to 81-82 and um, during that time, we, we won the... In those days, they used to have two Winfield Cups. There was one in Sydney and one in Brisbane. And um, that sort of gave me a real strong link, I suppose, in, in some ways to to Queensland because we were absolute rank outsiders and beat South, which were captained by uh, Mel Meninga and, 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 uh, and a cluster of other Australian test stars. And we beat them in the grand final to, to win the grand final up there. So that probably, you know, um, created that connection. But there is something very special there. Um, and it, I suppose in, in some ways it's a little bit like the chip that many Kiwis have on their shoulder when we look at Australia at various things. It's the big brother thing. There's a little bit of that involved with Queensland and New South Wales because traditionally um, before Queensland had poker machines, all the good players from Queensland went and played for the Sydney clubs. So when it came to the interstate series, um, the, the New South Wales would invariably win every single game, and they would, the games were normally won by the stars who served their trade and served their apprenticeship, playing in the Brisbane competition and other parts of Queensland. Hey, Lo, just to get your thoughts on it. So, you know, in the in the nineties, the eighties, when we when we watched Origin kick off and become the the behemoth that it, that it is today, and now you're looking at the players that are playing Origin. What what's sort of different about now than than it was when you were selecting the likes of Lewis and Miles and and Langers, um, as opposed to you know you've got Luai and um, you know Toto and those type of Pacifica boys now that are playing for the sides uh, instead of those those dead set Queenslanders or New South Wales. Oh, I think the Pacifica flavour has added something special to it, and um, you know, the, I mean, at the end of the day, most of them are Aussies. They've grown up there. You know, they've got Australian passports. 
and um, you know the majority of them are Aussies. I, I think it adds a, adds, a, adds a special flavour to it. Um, the only thing that that um, that I think has to be kept in mind is Australia. I mean, uh, Queensland versus New South Wales was always a trial for the Australian team, and even when Origin first started, so uh, the first first year of Origin, it wasn't going to be played unless unless uh, New South Wales or unless it was a winner. For, with New South Wales for the first two games, so they're already Queensland had already lost two interstate games and then played the third one in, a, in the Origin format. So um, it, it was always done for the you know to to, to select a uh, an Australian team. So you know with, with the Pacifica flavour, it's added a, it's added something special to it, but also probably it's taken away from from. Um, you know, so the island nations in particular, maybe some of their best players. And mm. um, so that's got to be kept in mind as well. Mm. Lowe, you mentioned uh, when you were talking about Wally being more of a man manager than, I guess, the, the specific coaching of it. How how were you received by the Queenslanders? Because obviously, um, as can be mentioned, you did coach in Queensland, but you were a Kiwi. And I guess, you know, coming yeah. into an environment where there is just so much pride in an area, did you find that you, you sort of, it was a bit of an adjustment for you? No, it wasn't an adjustment to me, really. Um, you know, because I, I, I knew I had to keep, you know, pull my head, pull my head in a little bit, and, and uh, just, you know, watch what I had to say. But I, it, it came with a responsibility that, that I don't think I've ever had before. I mean, to coach your country is is such a thrill, and you know, as as, as Kempi will tell you, that's such a thrill and an honour, and, and makes you feel so proud. But this was something different again. You know, this is, is somebody else's state, and. Um, and, and it just it, it happened like it was like winning lotto really for me because I just never thought it would possibly happen. But you know the Queenslanders themselves, I, I, they were just fantastic. I always remember after we won the series, and the, I mean the Aussies, the, we like to we like to hammer the Aussies and say this that and the other about them. But they're great people and they've got a great attitude and a great a great look on life. And I always always recall after during the celebration period of the. Um, of the win that we had the first year, the second year I actually shouldn't have coached them because I was, I, I, I was really in a, in a really bad way. There. Even with Manly, I should have pulled out of Manly because I was in and out of hospital and still recovering from the brain hemorrhage, and I had further strokes during the year, and lost my memory, and goodness knows what. So, but I just, you know, I don't know, I just kept going. But um, during the celebrations of that first year when we won. Um, the Premier, Wayne Goss, was the Premier of Queensland at the time, and they made me an honorary Queenslander. And to my knowledge, I'm the only one that's ever happened to, ever. Mm, yeah. And also, <laughs> during the speech, as only, as, as only Aussies would do during a speech, Wayne Goss said, any any establishment in Queensland found charging Graham Lowe for a forex will immediately lose their licence. <laughs> so you just can't imagine. You, you, can't, you can't imagine anyone saying something similar, can you? They just don't take themselves too serious. <laughs> next, time you, next time you head up to Queensland, Lowy, I'm coming with you. God, I don't have to bring any money. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, Lowy, what it, it happened after. No, it's, um, it's really, I find it really fascinating, Lowy. You know, like you, you're arguably the best coach we've had in this country with the credentials and the CV to, to boot with the back of it. Um, but you had some fantastic players, haven't you? You know, like I'm talking Kiwi players with Huey and and Mark Graham, who's arguably our player, our best player we've ever had. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself on the Queensland side with Miles and Lewis and 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 the likes of Langer, you know, coming coming out of the out of the uh, blocks. Who was the best player out of out of the Kiwis and the Queensland players that you coached? I think I I, I can't. Well, well, you know what it's like, Kimby. It's hard to. I don't think a player ever let me down, no matter who I coached, um, whether it be Odahu or or Queensland or, or or the Kiwis. I just, but I I can't separate the three best players that stick in my mind always. Um, um, uh, Ellery Hanley from from the UK from Wigan, yeah, and uh, Wally, you know, Wally just made me feel so comfortable and and, and just he was just so welcoming for for me to be there, and and obviously Mark Graham. So that, those three players. All bring, they all had the ability to totally dominate and shift what was happening in the game, and um, you know, so it's, it's hard it's hard to separate them. But you know, uh, Wally was Wally was a person in that in that time 
that many in New Zealand like to hate. You know, he was because he used to he crawled us so many times when Australia was playing. Hmm. Um, the the he, he alone sort of sort of laid the platform or did something just special that only Wally could do that would would bring tears to our eyes and. And um, to be able to, you know, to be able to be in the room with him and be in the dressing room with him and in the hotel meeting rooms and things and, and say, look, I need you to do this. And he'd say, yes, but, and then and, and make sure it got done and then come back and say, was that all right? And it, I mean, that, that coach-player relationship is, is pretty pretty special, Kempi, isn't it? It is. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Lowy, do you still, have you sort of kept watching Origin over the years? Do you, do you stay up late for it every time it's on? Oh, absolutely! I'm, I'm absolutely. It sounds like I'm bragging. I'm not bragging, but I'm really proud to be part of the Fogs. Fogs are former Origin greats. They have over in Queensland, and and they have a. So I'm going over for the. Uh, they have a luncheon before the last game that's played in Brisbane of every series. So this this year there's only the one game up in the second the second game. So I'm going over there for the Fogs luncheon. I'm taking a you know quite a few. Kiwi blokes over with me. The the list is getting bigger every year of, of guys who want to go and come this lunch, and it's just massive. It's bigger than anything that we can imagine here, even with our with our rugby union cousins. You know, they they they. Um, it's just fantastic, and it's just part of the great build up towards the Origin game on, on that Wednesday night. So, and it's a great game to go to as well because no matter what happens tonight, yeah, the second game has. Significance. Yeah, that's a decider. All right, Loie, uh, take the iPod, uh, eye patch off for a second if you can. Who have you got tonight? Game one. Um, Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I knew it. You know, you know, Loie, that's that's one where you roll some paper up and you hit that guy on the head. You know, when he asks you that question, <laughs> I'll do it for you. Okay. Can you give us a Can you give us a scoreline or or a margin, Loie? Oh, I, I, it's it's you can't. You know, because anything could. Both both teams have players that could just break open the game. Like, um, you know, you know, I, I think I think the opportunity there that for um, oh, what's his bloody name on the um, Reece Walsh, yes, he could just yeah. he could light up like like we haven't seen for a long time. You know, if things go his way, he could just light it up. Um, I really like the 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 uh, Penrith influence in the back line they've got there for New South Wales. But gee whiz, you look at Cobo and Valentine, Valentine Holmes is, is an absolutely perfectly made player for origin type footy. Um, and then, you know, the other Cowboys in there, Munster and, and Daly Cherit. I mean, Daly, Daly's had a pretty quiet season by his standards in many ways because Manly haven't hit their straps yet. But he is absolutely comes to light in, in, um, in state of origin footy. So you, you just never know. It's just... The teams are so evenly matched, and and the the game turns just with a moment that in time that it's a moment in time that stays with with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people for years to come. But it's only a moment of time, and it turns the whole game. The guy I do like, and I'm glad to see out there playing, is Nico Hines for New South Wales. I think he's a fantastic player. Yeah, you're dead right, Lowe. Well, you're you're a, a former Kiwi coach and a legend over here, and you and you are definitely a former Origin great. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us this afternoon, Lowe. It's been good to talk to you again, mate, and uh, getting all those memories. I'm excited about tonight. Let's uh, let's go Queensland. Let's go New South Wales. Put on another great event, and uh, again, we'll talk to you about that later on, Lowe. But um, thanks a lot for joining us on Running It Straight. Good on you, Kempi. I'll, I'll actually bring around a big carton of tissues for all those New South Wales people who might need it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Lowy. That's the that's sort of nigga we like. There you go. So Graham Lowe joining us there, of course, a former Kiwis coach and former Queensland coach. And I know Kempi had the biter's tongue there saying, let's go Queensland. Let's go New South Wales. He just trying to tip the scales, Kempi. I know how it is. Uh, we'll take a short break for new sport and weather, but don't go anywhere because after that, we are going to be chatting with the voice of rugby league, the voice of origin, Ray Rabs. Warren, he's going to join us on the line. Running it straight here on ECNZ. Thanks to South Seas Healthcare, Auckland's largest Pacific wellbeing service provider, and Super Liquor, who is helping us with our big origin preview. Check out our hot deals at superliquor.co.nz. Back after news. Thanks for that, Karen. Right, well, joining us now on Running It Straight, uh, it's a man who, well, it's a cliche, doesn't need any introduction. He really doesn't. The voice of rugby league for so many years and 
the voice of State of Origin. He's called many, many big occasions over the years. He went through all of the Wally Lewis era and then into the Lockyer, Thurston, Cameron Smith era. Uh, he retired, hung the boots up at 99, and he's been very, very kind to give up some of his time to us here on Running It Straight this afternoon. It is, of course, the great Ray Rabs Warren. He joins us on the line now. G'day, Rabs. How you going, boys? Nice to talk to you. Hey, Ray, just uh, off the bat, You've got Origin obviously kicking off tonight, but you've called it many times. What what are, what are the memories that uh, flood in this time of the year for you, Ray? Oh, probably my first Origin, which was back in 1989. Um, I did a total of 99, and then I retired, and people are still scratching their head wondering why I would do that, but <laughs> that's another story. But um, my first uh, experience was alongside Daryl Eastlake and... Uh, I got the shock of my life because the producer was standing behind the commentators and we were doing five minutes on, five minutes off. And he kept hitting Daryl over the back of the head with a rolled up program. And I thought, <laughs> I thought this is a fairly rough uh, commentary box here. But there's been um, a lot of memories, um, fellows. Um, I can't, you know, I can't forget the miracle try. I, I pulled that word out of my, out of my hat. I don't know. I don't know how I got it, but anyway, it's been played. It's been played time and time again. I I saw the magic of Wally Lewis for ten ten years. Um, the whole, just the whole arena of Origin was, you know, it, it was like the best day of the year. Mm. Talk to us about how um, you sort of saw it changing from when you first started calling it Ray through the years. Was the was the intensity and the rivalry always there from the start, or has it just sort of developed over all these years and every single year it just sort of keeps building on itself? No, I, I think if, if you want me to take you back to the genesis of Origin, it, it tells a story, and that is that back in the days of what we call the Interstate Series, it became quite laughable. Uh, it became a joke um, because in those days, the big leagues clubs here in Sydney, they, they would buy the good Queenslanders and those Queenslanders then were obligated to play for New South Wales. So some of the score lines were embarrassing and Senator Ron McCauliffe from Queensland uh, gathered up Kevin Humphreys from Sydney and said, look, this has got to stop. Um, and we've got an idea on the platter for this game called Origin, where you have to be for the to keep it simple. You have to come from Queensland uh, to play for Queensland, and the same for New South Wales. And so suddenly, uh, and you remember it well, in 1980, um, the, the game started, and Arthur Beetson had been consulted by both those gentlemen, and he said, "I don't think it will work." Uh, he said, "I can't believe that I could play against my best friend." and you expect it to work. And about 10 minutes into the game, Arthur put one on Michael Cronin's <laughs> nose and suddenly, <laughs> and suddenly Origin was off and running at, 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 at a fairly hectic pace. And it, it was being played under, I, I, I'm not frightened to say, it was being played under a different rule book, I think. Mm. And m- much of it was... Um, it was over the top, really. I, I mean, it was no, nothing less than thuggery. Uh, some of the matches I called, um, and I'm not. I'm not one of those people that suggests we go back to the the biff and the barge. Come on. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not because of the simple reason. That I think uh, under legislation and law, uh, you'd be stupid if you turn a turn a blind eye on making the game safe as as safe as you can make it. You've only got to look at American football. They've paid out, I think, a billion dollars in uh, in compensation um, through through uh, the legal system. So uh, you can't blame administration for trying to tidy the game up. But Origin has is, 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 is still got its luster. There's no doubt about that. And um, uh, I don't think it's ever going to die, to be honest. That's 43 years, Ray, and I remember it real real well. We used to get the VHS here in New Zealand because we never had a thing called Sky then, and we have to play it a couple of days later, and it was about sharing it with your mates. Just take us back to those early days, the Chris Close uh, battle when he when he basically took on the whole of the New South Wales team. That's down in folklore. They still use him today, and that chat in the Queensland camp. What was, what was it like watching those guys like Chris Close, Wally Lewis, 
um, you know, the Neeblings, the Dowlings, all those guys coming against the, the professionals in New South Wales? Yeah, well, you, you've got to understand that a lot of those fellows were playing, they were playing club football up in Brisbane. You know, the, the evolution of um, people like Lewis um, is quite stunning. I mean, he, he didn't necessarily play a lot of Winfield Cup Um and they basically, they their preparation was playing for Wynnum Manly or for the North Devils or people like that. But you, you just rattled off a few of the names. And uh, every time I listen to, you know, um, old tapes, you know, Langer and Lewis, and then you've got Miles, and then you've got Close, and then you've got Sailor and Takiri and Willie Khan and Michael Hancock. And God almighty, they, they used to provide some some wonderful exhibitions um, and, and, and would all, nearly always start outsiders, to be honest with you. Uh, whoever frames the market, I, <laughs> I one day want to, I want, to, I want to meet up with him and buy shares in his company. <laughs> <laughs> I, think he's, uh, I think I saw somewhere actually that Queensland tonight are at two bucks, which is the lowest they've ever been since 2016, which is hard to believe can be given that they've actually won it a couple of times over the last few years. Ray, um, in terms of you commentating Origin, um, you've obviously commentated grand finals, you, you've commentated uh, internationals and other very, very big matches. What was it like uh, on game day calling an Origin game and what was, the, what was the crowd like? How did it differ from, say, a grand final? Um, uh, fairly similar. Yeah, I, I, it's no use um, uh, me saying anything else. I mean, a full stadium is not just a dream for the players and the promoter. It's an absolute dream for a commentator. Mm. The, the, the biggest, the biggest um, help I I would get from any commentary would be having a full house because. You need the crowd. You need to know when the crowd are excited. If they're excited, you should be excited. If they're not, why are you screaming and shouting when the crowd's not even interested? You know, it's just a, a take it up for five and kick. I mm. mean, that's not necessarily the most entertaining game of football, but the crowd meant so much to me. And anything that was bursting at the seams, grand final, uh, international test match or state of origin, uh, that was that was what I enjoyed most, but of course you you could you could cut the air. It was electric. It was beautiful. But from a personal point of view, they used to basically govern my excitement level. Hey Ray, look, if you go through the years, and I read it a couple off beats, and you know, close. You said Miles Meninga. You throw Lewis Langer. You know, you go over Johnny uh, Joey Johns, and and then all of a sudden the new breed come on. Cam Smith, Slater, Cronk. Who has been the best? In origin over the forty-three years that you've seen, uh, I think, I think I've probably, I probably answered this question a million times. But when you dominate something, Tony, for ten years, uh, let's call it a decade. Uh, it might have been eleven years. When you're absolutely dominating um, and winning eight man of the match awards in that decade, it's very hard to go past the king. Um, and I, I repeat, a lot of those fellows, they they haven't, they weren't playing Winfield Cup at the weekend. In fact, I remember first seeing Wally Lewis when he was sitting on the bench. I think a fellow called Norm Carr was the, the number six for Queensland, uh, or combined Brisbane, I think it was, in the AMCO Cup. And a fellow called W. Lewis came off the bench. But look, there's been some wonderful players. You mentioned most of them. Um, Cameron Smith, uh, he... He was dominant. He was a professor dressed as a footballer. Um, but Wally Lewis is, is my answer. It's not, not difficult to say that. Yeah, no, and a view shared by a lot of people here. Uh, Rabs, just before we let you go, uh, I remember, I'm not sure if it was an NRL game. I, I, I'm fairly certain it was Origin, but I think it might have been Sturlow who, after doing a, a pregame sort of comment, asked you who you were supporting. And you said, I don't support anyone. Put me down for rugby league. Now that you're not calling the games, are you able to tell us whether you were a Blue or Maroon across the years? <laughs> I, no, I, I, I'm, I'm really happy you asked me the question because I prided myself on trying to be unbiased. Um, I, I knew that uh, I was born and bred in, in New South Wales. I knew that, but uh, I, I, I defy you, you know, to, 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 to pull out any match, any origin match anyway, where I didn't try 
desperately to uh, to recognise both sides equally. Um, and I had people, you know, from Queensland, particularly radio and television interviews, saying, um, uh, "Why don't you give New South Wales a fair? Go? Why don't you give Queensland a fair go?" And I said, "Look." I said, why don't you get your own commentary team together up there and go to <laughs> Channel 9 and, and, and you do you do it yourself? Because I said, otherwise, for me to be absolutely um, uh, trying to appease you, I should live on a houseboat in the middle of the Tweed River. Because <laughs> that's the border, just for those that don't know. But I, did, I didn't want to live in a houseboat in the middle of the Tweed River just to qualify for being unbiased as a mm. commentator. Mm. Look, I, I, that, there, there have been times when I've been thrilled by people like Brad Fittler and people like Brett Mullins, but equally I've been, nobody has championed Billy Slater more than I have, mm. and Darren Lockyer and, and Wally Lewis. So, I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're accusing me of that. But, um, <laughs> well, I, I, great answer. I was, I was, I was going to say, Rebs, the fact that I've actually had to, had to ask you the question probably shows that over the years you have been so unbiased. So it's a credit to you. Well, I, yeah, I'm proud of that. I really am, and I don't think I ever bagged a player, and I don't think I, I don't think I bagged uh, too many people at all. Maybe I got on the, on the back of the referee occasionally because I, I had a fair knowledge of the rules. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's about me. It's about tonight. It'll be, it'll be a good game. I've got no doubts about that. I did the last one there in Adelaide in 2020, which Queensland won, and. Uh, that bookmaker bloke, he thought that they had no hope, but mm-hmm. they won eighteen fourteen. <laughs> it, it, it's a cricket ground, as you know, so there's a bit more pressure on the kickers. But um, that night, Queensland, they just played that simple old origin game. Hang on to the ball, no errors. Kick early if you're coming out of your own zone. Chase the ball like hell and then bash them <laughs> and work for a mistake. And then bash them some more, and and then maybe we'll do something a bit fancy. But that's their methodology. You, you watch it; it'll be on again tonight. Yeah, Jeez, I think you should have took on coaching uh, Rebs with that analogy there, not commentating. But <laughs> look, thanks a lot for joining us on Running It Straight this afternoon. It's always fantastic to talk to you and. and dip into the memory banks of Ray Warren, the voice of, uh, of State of Origin. Actually, the voice of Rugby League has still got you um, firmly imprinted in my mind anyway. Ray, thanks a lot. You go well today, and uh, thanks for joining myself and Sammy Hewitt on Running It Straight. Okay, Tone. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for talking to me, and thanks for those nice words. We're running it straight. We're eight minutes away from three. We don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, but great to catch up with uh, Rabs, Ray Warren. What a legend he is. And someone's just texted in saying, well done, boys. Two wonderful interviews. Brought a huge smile to my face to hear those two gentlemen speak so passionately about our wonderful game of rugby league. Thank you, Hone from uh, Tokomaru Bay. So uh, no worries, Hone. And another one from Shan says, two great interviews, boys. Love hearing the old boys' stories. They are great. Now, Kempi, we've been asking people to text in their favourite origin memories for a double pass to the Warriors. You can keep those coming in. There's a few here. Uh, Graham Lowe coaching the Maroons to victory. Kiwi coach doing the bizzo on the biggest league showpiece on earth. Here's the reason so many Kiwis follow Queensland. My favourite origin memory is the tackle from Talos on Hodgson. Legendary. That is from uh, Luke on Hodgson. Uh, Dale, I was at the game, Sammy. Uh, Steve Price saw me in, the war- in my Warriors jersey. Came up to give me a good day post match. I'm surprised he was still walking after that, <laughs> Kempi. He's still up in the uh, up in the clouds. Uh, Paul says favorite moment: Michael O'Connor kicking the winner in the that. pouring rain against all odds around the corner and from uh, the right, from, at right edge. From Joe says best origin memory for me was Mark Guy being a lunatic on the field and squaring up to War- Wally Lewis for a scrap that didn't happen. Iconic moment in origin history. Got 40 seconds uh, before we're about to crash into an air break. So what I'm going to do is take that last air break. When we come back, we will get a final prediction and some thoughts from Kempi as we build towards Origin One this evening between Maroons and New South Wales. Thanks to Super Liquor. Cheers to good times. You can check out their hot deals on superliquor.co.nz. We are coming up to 3 o'clock. We're going to hand over to the run home. But, Kempi, before we get there, game one tonight, it is the Maroons v the Blues state of origin. What have you got? Who have you got? And where do you think the game's won and lost? Well, it, I think it's going to be a tight game. It's too hard to call it. But where it is going to be won and lost is on the back of Nathan Cleary's kicking game and how uh, Reese Walsh and his um, Toalagi and Cobo handle it, um, along, along with the way that they can set the platform and hopefully get Munster and, and Daly Cherry Evans and the Ford pack on the front foot. So, mate, if they don't handle the kicking game, they're in big trouble. Right. But if they handle the kicking game, Reese Walsh, play the game, and Munster runs a cutter. So what's your prediction? 
I just said I can't pick it. It's too well, close. Well, I need you to pick it, Kempi. You want I me need to you to it? give me something. Don't be Ray Warren. Okay. You don't sit on the fence. Give me a result. I'm going to go draw. Oh, boo. Boo. I'm going to go New South Wales. I'm going to go 16 points to 12. Whoever wins, it will be 16-12 or 14-10. You heard it here first, SNZ. Oh, so you're going either way. Sport. Either no, way. no, I'm going New South Wales, but I said if it goes either way, that is the score line. You can thank me in the morning. <laughs> Enjoy the game this evening, folks. It's going to be an absolute cracker. If you're going to jump on the punt, please gamble responsibly. That's me and Kempi for another week. Run home coming up next.